Hey traders, Raggy here and in this recap video we're going to cover a number of markets that we've been talking about for the better part of a month. We're coming into the last handful of days of July and I wanted to recap some things we talked about basically a month back and uh, two markets come to mind. Now I know not normally do futures traders think about necessarily ETFs. But ETFs are an alternative asset class for a lot of futures trades and a lot of futures contracts will have impact on these ETFs. I'm going to talk about two of them right now. And uh, these are both positions we talked about at the end of June. In fact, I flew up to New York, had an interview with Real Vision, the folks over at Real Vision. So it's kind of cool to have this on video. And there were two trades that we talked about. One was FXI and one was IEO. So I'll talk about both these trades I discussed with the folks at Real Vision. Now, first of all, FXI is very much a play on the US-China tension that we saw really putting a hammer to the Dow and sending it lower. Now, funny enough, fast forward, the Dow is one of the stronger currency stories, or not currency, <laughs> index stories that we have right now, interestingly enough. Um, I do think that the market's just kind of accepting the current situation between the U.S. and China. And it does seem that China is extending a bit of an olive branch. And, and we can see it in a couple markets. FXI is one of them. This is a market that we've been long from with a zone that takes us from 42 down to 41. And this is a zone that I talked about while I was in New York, that this is a viable oversold support zone. I think we were looking at for lows even testing 40 if those would occur. I talked about getting long. And here we are now up at levels that I would start to say are arguably overbought or at least starting to look a little shaky. I think this could be the beginning of more strength, but I would really like anyone who took the position down in this area to realize a profit up in this area in the wave. And then, you know, reduce the position size that reduces risk. And we can see how high is high. Similar situation here on IEO. Now, IEO was another one that I recommended. It was a play on, you guessed it, crude. I think crude was at a trickier point in its market trend and its cycle. And I thought IEO presented a lower risk, more sedate scenario that allowed some of the companies that I think will continue to benefit on growing the infrastructure in crude. In other words, looking for higher highs, whether the higher highs in crude come or not, I think we start to see higher highs in names like XOP, IEO, because the infrastructure has a lot of catching up to do. So the idea was to buy anywhere between 71 and 72. And you can see where we're looking for that zone. This isn't a random zone. This is very much about major psychological levels. And you can see exactly where all this was built. And this was all at the end of June. Uh, I think the 28th is when I spoke with the folks at uh, Real Vision. So here we are once again. I believe this is where you guys want to reel this position in. I think we could see higher highs. I absolutely do. But this is what I'll, what I'll recommend now. OK, first of all, crude's back on its way up, which I think bodes pretty well for uh, this trade. But what I'd like to recommend everybody do is not play the breakout through this high here at 77.23. Rather, wait for the halfback. Wait for this trade right here and don't do this. This is, to me, a whole lot more risky. Right. Caution. I'd rather you play the halfback pullback. And it's un it's really uncanny how often you'll see anywhere for a, a pullback down to this golden mean to the halfback from a, a recent move higher. In fact, this is me cutting the range in half, which is the way that I like to actually put these positions on. Cut the range in half, use the Darvis to identify where that pullback level would be. OK, and then that's what I'll look at uh, there. Now, um, I'm just cutting the range in half. If you want to pull more of a Fibonacci, that's fine. Uh, we're going to be doing a class in this one tomorrow. Uh, you can check that out, how I do this, how I look at symmetry. We'll, we'll break down some of the symmetry moves, but you can see where it puts us in a very, very similar area. And if you haven't yet checked it out, we're doing the uh, summer 
final summer series for our Fibonacci July here at Simpler. The last series is going to be mine, futures, day trading, exponential moving averages, market trend structure, and yes, how do we use Fibonacci symmetry and, and different levels to uh, trade futures. And these are just some of the topics that we'll cover. All right, so I did want to talk about another market, and we'll talk more about this in the premium video, and that is beans. Now, I don't wander into grains very often. My emphasis is usually on metals, indices, currencies, energies, and treasuries. I'll cover my new entry on treasuries in the premium video as well, what we're looking at for another opportunity to short the 30-year, the long bond, uh, apart from that 146 short that we already took. But what's interesting about beans is beans is a great barometer for China-US relations. I think the low in beans is in. There's a couple ways we can play this. There's an interesting range that seems to be forming in here. And I think an oversold buy could be one that's very interesting to me. And also the 480 minute time frame. It's a very fresh uptrend. And a pullback buy here to about the 878 area could be a really low risk way to engage beans to the long side as a pullback buy along the lines of a trend follow, okay? All right, so threw a lot at you here. A little bit of Chinese narrative, a little bit of crude oil narrative, alternative ways we can play those via ETFs, which I think is a powerful way to look at being a futures trader and playing all asset classes because I think you do have an advantage when you look at futures first or currencies first and then the broader markets. And then uh, a couple things on how to play what I think could be uh, movement higher in beans. I'll see you in the next update.